So you want to learn Blender. And super fast! But don't know where to start. I need help. Here's a super quick introduction to get you going. We'll go over the most common things you'll do to make a Blender scene, and then install an add-on, create a scene, add lighting, materials, use modifiers, and render it all out. Wow! First, download Blender. Install and click General to start a 3D scene. It looks kind of complicated, but here's the basics that you really need to know. This is a 3D viewport, and it's where the magic happens. Click and drag the middle mouse button to rotate the viewport, shift and middle mouse button to move the viewport, and scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. To make a render, you need three things, a camera, an object, and a light. By default, Blender starts a scene with these three things already here. So you can just press F12 to render the scene and Cut. Holy cow! Here's your first render. This thing is called the 3D cursor. By holding down shift and right clicking, you can move it around. To add an object, press shift plus A and choose from the menu. The new object gets added at your 3D cursor. Let's add a couple of basic meshes. Left click to select the object or shift and left click to select multiple objects. Press S to scale your object, G to grab, and R to rotate it. You want to edit your object? Press Tab to go into edit mode. And now you can grab the individual vertices, edges, and faces by choosing these icons at the top or pressing one, two, or three. You can also press G to grab, S to scale, E to extrude, you can tab out of edit mode back into object mode, and then in the modifiers panel, use subdivision surface to smooth out the model. What a car! Let's take a look at the other panels. Your timeline is for animation. Numbers at the top represent frames. Click an object, press I to add a keyframe. Now click on your timeline and add another. Blender will automatically animate between keyframes. The outliner up here shows everything in your scene, so you can select things easily. The properties panel is kind of useful too. These top five tabs are for global settings, such as render settings, export options, and world lighting. The bottom tabs are related to what you currently have selected. Blender also has loads of add-ons available. Here's one of my favorites, Blender Kit. It comes with loads of free stuff to get you going. Download it and install via the preferences. Let's make a quick scene with it. Let's start with a default scene. Press N on your keyboard to get the side menu. Go to Blender Kit and we're going to look at models for a start. Just click on search filters and select free first. This will ensure all the free assets come up front. Click on categories, architecture, building, uh, commercial. We've got a nice mini office here, which we're going to use, but you could choose from any of these assets at all that you want. Before you do that, let's just click back into your scene, press A to select all, and X to delete everything. Now drag the mini office from up here into your scene. Next thing we're going to add is a road. So right click, shift right click, press shift and A to add a plane, and then we're going to add a material to the road so it looks like a road and not just a square. So click materials, click asphalt, and let's choose this one damaged road here. Drag that, point it onto there. Now we can't see it because in this view mode it doesn't show all the materials. So click onto material preview mode and now we can see there's the road texture on the road. Now we could stretch this road texture by pressing S to scale and X to scale on the X axis, but that stretches the texture too, and we don't want that. So instead we're going to go to the modifier panel, we're going to add an array modifier, and this basically just adds a copy of whatever object you've got selected. Press G to grab, and Shift and Z so it doesn't move on the Z axis. And place it in front of the building, in fact, Let's move this down. So click on the item menu, and where it says Z, that's your up and down there. If you set that to naught meters, now I'll click black into Blender Kit. Right, we're going to press S to scale, and we're just going to scale the road up a bit. Next, we're going to add a car to our scene. So click on Models, 
just whiz back up here and we're going to choose transport car you could choose any sort of car that you want let's have a look at luxury supercars mercedes a toyota supra let's choose this ferrari so click and drag that so it's on the road down here at this point we're just going to save our blend file just in case of any crashes so go to file save as and put your blend file somewhere it's nice and safe i'm going to stick mine on the desktop click on the ferrari just up here in your outliner press r to rotate then Z to rotate on the Z axis, and then type 90, and it'll rotate your Ferrari exactly 90 degrees. Press G to grab, then Shift and Z, and you can move the Ferrari just on the X and Y axis, just to place it where you want on the road. Okay, great. Next, we're going to add a camera. So press Shift and A, add a camera. If you press zero on your number pad, you go straight to the camera mode. Now the easiest way to navigate the camera to get it to the point where you want to is go to view, navigation, walk navigation. Now you can look around with your mouse and you can move forward, backwards, left and right with W, A, S and D. And we're going to put the camera roughly in this position for now. If you can see over here, we can actually see all the camera settings here. We've got the focal length which changes from a zoom lens to a wide angle lens. We're going to set that to about 35, just to make it slightly wide angle. The last thing we need to do is add some lighting. Blender Kit also gives you access to something called HDRs, which stands for High Dynamic Range. And this is a nice way to kind of globally illuminate your scene in a real world setting. So if we click on this arrow next to Outdoor, we'll choose Urban, and we've got some nice environments up here to choose from. I'm going to choose this one called Venice Sunrise. So click and drag into your scene. This is the resolution. We'll choose 4096 and press OK. Now, if we go to rendered view at the top right here, you can actually see pretty good rendering. The HDR actually wraps all the way around your scene in 180 degrees. So you're actually getting real reflections in the windows. Press zero to go back into camera mode. Blender comes with two render engines. One is called EV, which is a real-time engine. It's, it's good for if, if you've got a slower computer. And if you switch ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections on, it gives you pretty nice results. But we're gonna go into cycles, which is the proper ray tracing engine. So click cycles, click GPU compute. We're just gonna set these max samples to 32 for the viewport, switch denoising on, 64 for the render. And as you can see, we've got this really cool looking render. Adjust the camera if you want to, and then press F12 to see your masterpiece. Thanks for watching. I'm Leo from MediaWay, and I've done loads of other YouTube Blender tutorials that you might enjoy. So like and subscribe for more, and check out these suggestions.